Good morning everyone and welcome to Dream Big Gran Canaria. I'm Angela and hi I'm John. We'd like to start today's video off by really thanking everybody who watched, liked and subscribed to our brand new channel last week. Um, it was just fantastic all of the wonderful comments and support and encouragement that we received from everybody. Just was, yeah, a really big thank you, yeah, guys. Thank you to everybody. It made such a difference to us. Um, obviously, it was a bit of a daunting task in the first place. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> because it's not something we've ever done before. No, it's a whole new experience for us, guys. A whole and new experience. It really was made an awful lot uh, more pleasant by the feedback that we got afterwards. So, just to give you guys a little bit of a background, about uh, 15 years ago, I guess, we started traveling here on holidays once, maybe twice a year. And we really very quickly fell in love with love the, the island. island. Love the, it. It's just a beautiful place to be. We love the culture, we love the climate, but most importantly, we love the people that are here. This is one of many places that we really love to visit on the island. It's called Mas Palomas and it's south of the island and it's just fantastic. Very, very popular, as you can see. Sandy beaches, the ocean. Which I love. Yeah. The sandy beaches are beautiful yeah, yeah, they are. and the natural sand dunes, it's just incredible. And it's, um, it's a natural sand that is here because some of the other places that's on the island, they import the sand from Africa and we are going to put in clips of the island in future videos as well. So, so that you can see it from um, all aspects that we want you to experience what we experience in the north but also what we experience when we travel down south and over the years that we've been here. Yeah, and as we're talking about experiences, guys, the nightlife here, the sunsets in, in Mas Palomas are spectacular. All along here, there's, um, it's Numerous. a walkway. Yeah, yeah, and there are so many uh, places where you can sit and have uh, dinner and watch the sun go down. It's just incredible. Restaurants are fantastic. The, um, the sangreas are fantastic. and. Then, Too nice. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and then the nightlife. I mean, look. So after falling in love with all of this, then reality hits. Big time. Yeah, we start to think to ourselves, well, we need some kind of a van or we need some way of getting our possessions over to Gran Canaria. After we had completely decided that this was where we wanted to be and what we wanted to do. Yeah, so we had a lot of personal things that we didn't want to leave behind and we kind of toyed with the idea of getting a van then and turning then to a camper van. And then one day I'm on the internet and um, I see this. So after seeing this, I say to Ange, what do you think about getting an ambulance and converting it to a camper van? And I loved the idea. I agreed straight away, strangely yes. enough. So <laughs> then we decide, well, okay, we'll go and take a look at it. Now, we'll just go and take a look. We won't get too excited. There won't be any deals done. There won't be any falling in love with it. We'll just go and take a look. Yeah, yeah, right. right. <laughs> we ended up doing a deal with the guy. On the day. On the spot. And as part of the deal, he said that he would drive it over to our house. So now we have an ambulance delivered. An ambulance parked outside of our front door. So then we start getting the phone calls from all of our <laughs> lovely concerned neighbours. Is there a medical emergency? What's going on? Has John got a new job as an ambulance driver? Well, it's not the norm, right, to have an ambulance parked outside of your house. So when we've got the ambulance, we open up the doors and we have a few decisions to make. 
So as you can see, the inside is completely kitted out as an ambulance. And we then started to look and think, what style are we going to convert it into a camper? And But when we put our minds to it, we came up with a plan very quickly. It was important to both of us that we re retained as many of yeah. the ambulance features as we could because we wanted it to be that bit quirky and unusual. So over the next year, in our spare time, between our jobs and everything that was going on, we worked on the conversion. Most weekends we worked on it, probably every evening after work, for a long time. It was a fantastic experience and we really, really enjoyed doing it. But in truth and in all honesty, it was mostly John that done all the work. <laughs> yeah, but I loved it. And I didn't. It, it was a labour of love and it very quickly became a game of millimetres. Every millimetre was important to us because it was such a small space. But we turned this into this. In a future video, we will go through the conversion with you guys. So in early 2019, we decided that we'd start looking on the internet for a place to rent in Gran Canaria because we thought to rent for the first couple of years was the best decision for us. It was a good idea to do that. Actually. Yeah, because we wanted to explore all of the different parts of the island and just to be sure where it was that we wanted to end up. So. Ange goes on the internet and finds a place. So we were kind of very interested in it. So I flew over, took a quick trip over, seen it, thought that we liked it and it suited our needs. So we rented it. And then we were committed, obviously. So then we decided to put our own house in Ireland up for rent. Up for rent. So now the camper van is ready, our house is rented out and we have a new home in Gran Canaria. So we pack up all of our stuff into the camper van with our little dog, this is Ella, our little Bichon, pack everything up into the camper van and away we go. So we take the ferry from Rosslare to, and we drive across England overnight down to the south coast and we take the ferry from Poole in, on the south coast of England to France. And we make a bit of a holiday of it. <laughs> Definitely we make a bit of a holiday. We decided it, it was the perfect opportunity to um, experience traveling um, in a very full camper. Yeah, the camper van is completely full, right? To so, the extent that yeah. we can't even stay in it. So <laughs> we end up having to check into Airbnbs and um, hotels along the way, which was actually perfect. Was a bit of fun. Yeah. yeah, and some of the food, this, this particular plate of stuff I liked. It's pig's cheek with a beer which to me was <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> and then we were fortunate enough to, to get Guinness in Cadiz. Well, some of us were. So after traveling for 36 hours on the ferry from Cadiz, we arrived into Las Palmas at eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah, so we drive from Las Palmas, the ferry terminal in Las Palmas to Fergas. And this is the place that we had rented in Fergas. Now it was basic enough, but we turned it into something very comfortable, pretty quick, and we had some good times there, for sure. Yeah, we really enjoyed the time that we spent there, and we met some amazing people. So during our stay in Fergus, coronavirus. And lockdown happened. But I have to say, we could have had to endure lockdown in a lot of worse circumstances. We were pretty thankful for the facilities that we had. Yeah, and, and the pool. The pool and the uh, lovely big garden so we were pretty thankful for where we were yeah and just as we're talking about the pool our little dog Ella here's Ella she fell into the pool and she got out from this steps here in this part of the pool but she recovered fairly quickly so after lockdown was lifted uh, we decided to make the move to Galdar um, at this time our youngest daughter from Vancouver had come to visit us and to stay for a while so she was actually living in the camper in the garden so she helped us move to Galdar which was amazing.
have been looking for a piece of property to either build on or to renovate and we did actually go and see a lot of places over the two year time span that we've been here but we actually never found a place that we loved as much as the place that we have now um, they or they just didn't work out for us for one reason or another until this one yeah mm. yeah so we end up in the notary office with the people who are selling which is a strange one for us because normally you don't meet them but um, so you're sitting opposite the table to them the deal is done the notary signs it off and it. the land is yours it's yours that's it simple and as <laughs> here we are so this is the entrance into the land at the moment and um, so you you walk down we will do another entrance in at the top for cars and one thing or another but as you can see there's a lot of work before we get there and a lot of growth a lot of things to get rid of and it's not that easy to get machinery or anything down there as you can see so we will have to work a lot of it by hand the palm trees that you see are canarian palms and they are protected by the spanish government so you can't cut them down not that we would or that we want to, they're not going anywhere. palm trees this is a feature on the land that we really like is the stone wall it runs uh, the width of the land and it divides two terraces the lower terrace we are going to make it into a, a garden that we can grow food fruits vegetables in and the upper terrace is where we plan to put our tropical garden As you can see, Angie is really eager to get clearing the land. Well, it was a long time coming, so I can't wait to get stuck in and get moving on this project. But before we do... That's part of the story as to how we got here so far. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it and we'll see you all next week. But in the meantime, don't forget to like, share and subscribe.